We want to demonstrate the fundamental principles of lighting in this series of videos. This is a necessary component for 3D modeling because it can significantly improve the final rendering. As a result, it is critical to understand how light works and how we can manipulate it to achieve the desired results. And we'll show you how by using real light. We'll also use this pretty mannequin as a model to demonstrate how light works. Essentially, we'll demonstrate how to manage light in real life. In this case, in our photographic studio. So, even if you are not a photographer, or are not particularly interested in photography, it is critical that you learn these fundamental principles and apply them in your 3D modeling software. Indeed, all rendering engines are able to simulate light behavior in a very realistic manner. As a result, the same considerations that we make with real lights can be replicated in your 3D modeling software. This is our photographic studio, and there are numerous lights visible. That is because each light serves a specific purpose and produces different results. So, the most important question is, what are the principal properties of light? And how do they influence our rendering style and mood? Let's look at how light interacts with our subject to get answers to these questions. And to do so, I'll utilize the most basic of lights, namely a point light. A point light is the most basic type of light we can manage. We deal with point lights on a daily basis. It is also the basic light in 3D modeling software, such as Blender in this case. The term point refers to the fact that the light source can be assimilated to a small source, such as a point. This is obviously not a point because it has some volume, but you get the idea. A point light shines in all directions. As a result, lighting can be difficult to manage. Basically, we are illuminating everything. Remember, as we'll see in the following videos, that one of the most important aspects of the art of illumination is controlling the light source in order to direct the viewer's attention to a specific point. But we can't do that in this case. We'll see how to control the light with modifiers in later videos. So, when should we utilize a point light? Basically, when we want to add basic lighting to a scene, such as an ambient light. So, in this case, we can use this light to add just enough illumination to make all of the objects barely visible. In addition, we'll add more light to direct the viewer's attention where we want it, while also creating interest with contrast. However, as previously stated, we will see this in the following videos. A point light can also be used to illuminate the entire scene uniformly. Let's replace this simple light with something we actually use in photography. A continuous studio light is being used here. However, it is essentially identical to the previous one in that light is emitted in all directions and it has a small emission surface. But first, let's look at the other properties of a point light. And in order to do so, we must consider one of the most important aspects of light. The type of shadows it casts on the subject. Yes, shadows can be both your best friend and your worst enemy. They add atmosphere and style to the scene. As a result, understanding their properties is critical. These characteristics can be summarized as follows. The harshness of the shadows. The overall contrast. Moreover, the direction. These properties are discussed here in relation to the point light, but they are true for all types of lights that we will see in other videos. 
As the name implies, the hardness of the shadows refers to how hard or soft the shadows are in relation to their borders. The contrast is related to the difference in brightness between shadow and light areas. Furthermore, the direction denotes the direction of the shadows. These properties, when combined, can produce a variety of moods. Returning to our point light, its primary function is to cast sharp, high contrast shadows. This is because of its size. So we come to the other critical lighting concept. Size does matter. The harder the shadows, the smaller the light source. And because a point light has a very small emission surface, the shadows will be very sharp. However, keep in mind that when discussing size, we must consider it in relation to the subject. As a result, as we move the light away from the subject, it gets smaller in relation to it, and the shadows become harder. Moving the light closer to the subject causes it to become larger, resulting in softer shadows. At first glance, it appears to be counterintuitive. We would naturally believe that as we bring the light closer, the shadows become sharper. However, this is not the case. The sun is the most obvious example of this. The sun is enormous in size. However, it produces harsh, high contrast lighting. Why? Because it is also extremely far away. In relation to the object it is illuminating, it can be assimilated to a point in this way. And, as previously mentioned, we have the same point light in our 3D modeling software, and it behaves in the same way. Although it may be necessary to manually modify some parameters to achieve the same real-world behavior. However, because we understand how light works in the real world, we can modify it in the virtual one. And this is all in relation to some fundamental lighting principles, specifically the point light. The question now is how we can modify this light to produce all of the different types of lighting we desire. And we'll demonstrate that in future episodes.